Hi, and welcome to Test and Measurement Video 26. Today we're going to return to the amazing Tektronix MDO 3104 oscilloscope. We'll see how this instrument uses cursors to bracket specific portions of a waveform so that information can be gained about the enclosed segment. Cursors can be used for analog or digital channels. They are vertical lines parallel to the y-axis or horizontal lines parallel to the x-axis. In the oscilloscope's time domain mode, the horizontal cursors enclose and define a user-chosen amplitude, and the vertical cursors enclose and define a user-chosen time segment. These cursors can easily be turned on and off and moved. To begin, we'll display a signal from the built-in Arbitrary Function Generator, or AFG. We've connected a BNC cable from the AFG output on the back panel to the channel 1 analog input on the front panel. We could just as well access an external signal through a probe but this method works well because electrical parameters can be adjusted easily for comparison. Here we have chosen the default sine wave with default voltage and frequency values. With the sine wave displaying in channel 1, which is turned on by default, press the cursor button at the top of the front panel. It lights up, indicating the cursors are active. Pressing this button repeatedly turn, toggles cursors off and on. If you press and hold this button for about a second, the cursor menu appears across the bottom of the display. Multipurpose knob A moves left cursor in either direction so that it intersects the x-axis at different points along the timeline. As you do this, appropriate values in the cursor readout at the top right of the display change. In the left column, labeled A, top line, the absolute value in microseconds changes. The second line, labeled B, does not change because it is the exact value of the right-hand cursor, which does not move when you turn multipurpose knob A. The third value in the left-hand column, corresponding to the difference between the two cursors, changes as either of the two cursors is moved. This is generally the number of interest. Multipurpose knob B moves the right-hand cursor, and the values in the cursor readout window change, as you would expect. The whole time, regardless of which knob is turned, the values in the right-hand column fluctuate continuously, since they represent very small amounts of amplitude in the microvolt range. If you press select just under multipurpose knob A, it turns linking on and off. With linking on, multipurpose knob A moves both cursors together. Multipurpose knob B now regulates the distance between them. At the bottom of the cursor readout, the linkage status is indicated. To the right of the select button is the find button. Pressing it repeatedly toggles between fine and coarse, which relates to the sensitivity of multipurpose knobs A and B. When you have a long distance to go, coarse enables the adjustments to be made more quickly, but when, when working with cursors, fine is usually the way to go. Now we'll turn to the lower menu. Press the soft key associated with cursors repeatedly.
This toggles between waveform and screen. So far, we've been in the waveform mode. In screen mode, both vertical and horizontal cursors are shown in the display. The horizontal cursors cross the y-axis and they are associated with amplitude. In screen mode, repeatedly pressing select toggles the applicability of multipurpose knobs A and B relative to the vertical and horizontal cursors. Notice that the pair of cursors currently regulated by multipurpose knobs A and B is shown by a solid line and the pair not regulated by them is shown by a dashed line. In the screen mode, cursors are linked and unlinked by toggling the fourth soft key from the left. That's the basic operation of the cursor function in the Tektronix MDO 3104 oscilloscope. Thanks for watching. New videos are added periodically, so check back frequently.